Welcome in France, in Lesse for the fourth round of the French Rallycross Championship. We're in Lesse in Normandy, very sunny conditions, and local hero Dorian Lone is looking forward to the race. La piste est très bien, elle a très bien évolué hier avec euh, avec le temps. On a une très bonne météo, ce qui a permis d'avoir une piste euh, très asphaltée, on va dire, vraiment typée asphalte. Pour ma part, je me suis bien régalé hier. On a fait très bon temps, euh, donc il faut continuer aujourd'hui. Fabien Payet is looking forward to a first win, maybe. La piste est très bien. Les organisateurs ont fait un, un, vraiment un super boulot parce que tous les parties terres sont vraiment, vraiment nickel. En plus, la piste est très agréable à rouler. C'est technique, il y, a du, il y a du rapide, il faut avoir un gros cœur. Enfin, il y, a, il y a un peu de tout, donc c'est vraiment très agréable. Payet likes the track a lot, but Jimmy Tepero has some problems with the happens. La piste, je la trouve très belle, mais pas faite pour moi, donc euh, ce week-end, c'est très dur. Moi, j'aime bien les tracés euh, très rapides, comme la Varée et C. Euh, là, il y, y a un virage, c'est très technique et j'y arrive pas. Donc, on va faire des réglages pour être au mieux dans la journée, mais c'est difficile. Looking to get a right setup for the technical corners, Jimmy Tepero, but it won't be easy. Let's take a look at some heats first, and we'll start off in Division 3. With a good start for Stefan Drian in the white Clio, but an even better start for Xavier Brifo and championship leader Christophe Sonois. But it's Xavier Brifo who goes wide there, but he keeps on to the lead. Can Sonois pass him? No, not yet. Following Brifo, Brifo who set the third time in the opening heat. This is the second of three heats. And the two Clios are leading Brifo from uh, Stefan Drian. And Christophe Sonois who was quickest in the opening heat. We'll have to work hard if he wants to beat this man. Nice power slide there from Brifo. Andrea tries to follow him. But the track is very slippery. Brifo going to the joker lap and he keeps in front of uh, Tonois. That means he's a virtual leader. Here comes Stefan Oh, sliding wide, sliding very wide, and he hits the barriers. That's it for the Clio. Over and out for Stefan Drian in this second heat. The left rear wheel is completely damaged. So, Brifo from Sonois, who can set the quickest time here. It looks like it will be the Clio driver. Yes, it is. He wins the heat, and he sets second time overall. So Noir sets third time overall, that means he's already sure of a front row in the A-final. Dusty conditions in the Lesse, but the organizers have sprayed the track, so the dust remains on the ground where it should be, for most of the time even. Super 1600 now, another heat with Laurent Chartrain in the C1, following Dorian Lone who lives only a couple of kilometers away from this track. He won the opening round in Essay Lone, but the second and third round of the championship, he was less successful. Chartrain in the C1, taking the lead because Lone goes for the joker lap. Back to the Renault Clio, had switched to a Saxo kit car for the previous two rounds. That car is now again driven by Julien Febro. Fabien Chonois in the Dacia Sandero now in the lead. With Chartrain coming out of the joker lap. And he's behind Lonet. So that's looking good for uh, Lonet. The very rare Dacia Sandero. I believe this is the only one driving Rallycross in Europe. And there uh, comes Chonois into the uh, joker lap. It's up front, hello now, in the lead with the Saxo kit car, and the Dacia closes in on Laurent Chartrain in the Citroën C2. Here's Frank, hello. 
Still has to do his joker lap, so he will concede that first position soon. For the moment, it's still uh, the Clio of Dorian Lonet leading over, goes wide there. Laurent Chantra goes on the inside and he takes the virtual lead. What a mistake by Dorian Lonet. And Chantra keeps the C2 under control. Frank Hello goes for the joker lap and Chantra is now leading this heat. Ooh, Dorian Lonet will be very cross with that. And a nice heat win for Chantra. And Lonet, one place behind. He won't be too happy with that, but Chartrain, very happy with this win. I pas très très bien démarré, mais après le reste, euh, bon, j'étais derrière Dorian Lonet. J'ai j'ai subi un petit peu ses tours qui étaient pas super super bons. Et puis euh, j'ai réussi à en profiter avec le tour joker et je me suis un petit peu fait distancer par rapport à ça. Et puis après, j'ai réussi à le doubler parce qu'il était repassé devant moi et il a fait une grosse faute dans un virage. Donc euh, bon, j'en ai profité. And Lonet, very disappointed. La deuxième manche qualif s'est dans l'ensemble bien passé pour moi, sauf pour mon erreur de l'avant-dernier tour. Sinon, je pense qu'on aurait pu être quatrième, mais bon, on va se essayer de se rattraper en troisième manche pour euh, essayer de se qualifier pour la deuxième ligne de la finale, voire la première ligne. Donc, euh, on va tout donner en troisième manche. The third heat will be decisive, says Lonet. And he will try to get on the first row of the A final. Off to the Supercars division now. With a bad start for Christophe Wild, but a very good start for championship leader Grosse Janet, followed by Hervé Knappik. Grosse Janet had a bad first heat, atypically bad even. He only set fourth time. He won the previous three rounds, this championship leader with a massive lead. And normally he's first or second in the heats as well. But now the Clio seems to work well. He's increasing his lead on Knapik, who goes for the Joker lap. And he remains in second, because the others are already way behind. A bit disappointed there for Christoph Wild, who is second in the championship. Only set the sixth time in the opening heat. And he won't do much better here. Joker lap now for Grosse Janet. And Jerome Grosse Janet holds on to the lead quite easily. And he's looking for a very quick time. Wins the heat from Klapik. And Jean Jouin is in third in this heat. Good race for Jérôme grosset Janet. On a beaucoup travaillé ce matin pour trouver un bon départ. C'est ce qui nous a fait défaut hier. Et puis après, après je savais qu'il fallait rouler très vite parce que Fabien. Fabien va vraiment vite et euh, ça se finit avec, euh, avec moins d'une seconde d'écart sur, sur la manche. Donc, euh, donc ça se passe bien, mais voilà, il ne faut pas s'endormir. Il faut être très parce que Fabien Payet est going quickly as well, il says. Et Payet est dans cette heat et il prend le meilleur start. Il était le plus rapide dans la opening heat. Et il veut faire le même ici. Il est followed par Alain Heu dans le C4 WRC, mais Payet dans le 208. Driving away from the rest of the cars in this uh, second heat in the supercars division. Alain Heu, one of the two C4s WRC at the start. The other one driven by Christophe Wilk we saw in the previous heat. And here's Alain Heu, he was fifth in the first heat. And if he can stick with this man, he might improve on that. Going for the Joker Lap Payet. Now in second position for the moment. But Alain Heu still has to do those extra meters. A very technical joker lap here. Very slowly. And it could be very slippery as well. Payet retakes the lead from Alain Heu. And there comes Payet. What's the time? It's uh, just slower than Jerome grosset -Janin. So Payet goes for the second time in this heat. That means he's already on the front row of the A-Final. He might become a pole position if he can beat Grosse Janin in the third heat. But first, the B-Final in the Twingo R1 Cup. A very spectacular start there. And there goes the number six car. 
That's what happens if you try to squeeze four Twingos into a hole that only can take one. So Bastien Hero is taken out of his car. He's a bit groggy, a bit shaken up. But otherwise, okay. So we have the restart now without Hero. And it's uh, Pascal Huto who takes the best start. Still some pushing and shoving again. Huto dropped to third there, but now is squeezing Ayrton Boris up to the bank there. Firmin Kadedou slowly through the joker lap. He might lose a position there. Indeed, Pascal Huto now takes the lead, and Pascal Huto wins the B final and goes through to the A finals. And that was it for the first part. See you after the break. Welcome back in Lesse in French Normandy for the fourth round of the French Rallycross Championship. We are at the A finals. This is Division 4. And let's see what champion Jimmy Chaparro can do for the moment. He's beaten by a couple of Peugeots. It's Sebastien Leferon who takes the lead from Sebastien Guimot. And then Kevin Jacquinet. We are driving with Guimot following Leferon. And Leferon pulls to the left. There's a mechanical problem there for the leader. And that means Guimau is now leading from Jacquinet and Jessica Anterrier is in third position. Good start from uh, Guimau there. Joker lap now for Jacquinet and look how slippy it is there. The organizers have put down some water to keep the dust down and that means now that the joker lap is extremely slippery. We might get see some accidents there, and there's just Cantarier. She slips into the bank, and that's it for the lady driver. And leader Sebastian Guimau still has to do his joker lap. Can he get past the track, Cleo? Ooh, that's a small gap, and that's a hit. And the leader has told, and he's losing his first position. There comes Kevin Jacquinet, who takes the lead now, and Guimau drops to third, fourth position even. Jacquinet now leading from championship leader Jimmy Tepero and Sebastian Guimau trying to make up for lost time, but there is not much time left. Very frustrating that must be. And Kevin Jacquinet is heading for his first win of the season. Great result for Jacquinet and Jimmy Tepero with that second place. He will be very happy as well because this is a track he doesn't like, Just like he said before the start of the finals. But a good result for the championship leader. So Jacquinet wins it in a spectacular fashion. Un départ pas, pas si bien que ça. Parce que je sors, euh, je crois, deux. Je, je ne sais même plus, je crois si je sors deux, derrière, non, trois. Bon, malheureusement pour, euh, pour Sébastien Leferrand, euh, je pense qu'il casse une pièce euh, dans le virage là-bas. Donc ça le contraint à l'arrêt. Donc on était deux et j'avais vu que le joker était vraiment très, très, très gras. Et je pense, je pense que Sébastien s'est fait piéger dedans. Euh, alors que bon, moi, je suis rentré un, même un petit peu vite dedans. Mais bon, ça s'est bien passé quand même. Kevin Jacquinet, qui a fait la différence dans ce slippery joker lap. Je suis très heureux avec ce premier win. Donc so Jacquinet gagne de Tepero. Le François, le unfortunate Guillemot en 4th. Et Nicolas Bottrell en 5th. And a champagne shower on the July 14th, the French national holiday. Fitting conditions for a great race weekend. And we're off to the next day final in Division 3 with Marc Maurice in the black Peugeot in pole position. He takes a good start. And Christophe Sonois with the Toyota tries to squeeze him into the first corner. And it's Florent Bidonot in the mini who pushes Xavier Briffaut wide and he's in third now. So Marc Maurice leading 
from Florent Bidonneau. And Christophe Sonois, the championship leader, had already taken his joker lap. It's Stefan Drian now in third. This Clio fully repaired after that crash in the second heat. Followed by Mathieu Trivion, and Sonois is a bit blocked behind Trivion and his uh, Saxo. That means that Marc Maurice can increase his lead, and he would do an excellent affair of the championship then. Through the joker lap, still a bit slippery, but not as much as in Division 4. And Maurice comes back well in front of Sonois, who's still blocked behind Trivion and his Saxo. For Rambi Dunot now in the lead for the moment. Medino has been on the podium for every round of the championship up until now. Briefo chasing Sonois. Here comes Medino. Can he hold on to that third position? There comes Maurice, who's passed. There's Sonois, then Trivio, and Medino keeps that third position. Trivio even still has to do his joker lap, so there's no menace there for that third place for the mini driver. In front, it's still Marc Maurice and his Peugeot. And then Christophe Sonois in the Toyota. If everything stays like this, Sonois remains the leader in the championship. But a good result for Maurice. Final choker lap for Trivion there. That means Drian and Briffo gain a place. But it's Marc Maurice who wins the Division 3. Great result for Marc Maurice after a good start and a well-executed joker lap. Le départ s'est vraiment bien passé, j'ai pris un bon départ. Et puis je pense que j'ai bien géré euh, mon tour de joker et, et, ma, et ma course. Et comme, comme je le dis, j'étais rapide euh, ce week-end, je pense que voilà, ça a fait que j'ai fait une, une belle finale. A great final indeed for Marc Maurice and the whole of the family can celebrate with him. From Maurice wins it from Sonois, Bedouneau, Briefo and Dreal. And the Division <laughs> 3 guys can spray the champagne as well. While we prepare for the A final in the Twingo R1 Rallycross Cup. It's Cyril Raymond only in his third race who's on pole in the black. Twingo takes a good start there. Being chased by Julien Ardono and Fabien grosset -Janin. But it's Andrea Dubourg who tries to get to the inside. Andrea Dubourg goes completely sideways, hits the barriers, is hit by another car and another car. And I'm afraid that will be a red flag. End of the race for Andrea Dubourg, who is a bit shaken, but otherwise uninjured, fortunately. But we do get a restart without Dubourg. And it's again Cyril Raymond taking the best start in the black Twingo. Followed by uh, grosset -Jeanet. grosset -Jeanet even goes to the outside and takes the lead for the moment. But can Raymond retake it into the second corner? Yes, he can. Great driving by the youngster. The number 13 clearly bringing him some luck. So Raymond from grosset -Jeanet. Then Pascal Hutto and Julien Nodeau, who took his joker lap rather early. Now he's just waiting for the joker lap. There comes uh, Grosset Janet. He goes a bit wide, is stuck in the mud. Where does he come back behind? Julien Nodeau has lost the place. Grosset Janet, Fabien Grosset Janet, that is. He's the younger brother of Jerome Grosset Janet, the supercars driver. And Pascal Hutto still fighting for position, but he still has to do his joker lap, so he will drop behind Anodou and grosset -Janet probably. Joker lap as well for the leader. Cyril Rimont, without an error, he should remain in the lead. Yes, he does. And Anodou gains the spot and is now in second. And it's uh, grosset -Janet in third. Final corner for Cyril Rimont and two wins in two races. Great stuff by the youngster. Great result, great start, two great starts even, and a well-executed race. And that deserves some congratulations. <laughs>
Oh là là, déjà euh, premier, euh, premier euh, drapeau rouge, du coup euh, de nouveau procédure de départ et euh, j'ai rien lâché au premier virage, il y avait Fabien à côté de moi, je savais que j'étais euh, bien placé pour le virage euh, précédent, enfin suivant pardon, et euh, du coup après j'ai rien lâché, rien lâché et euh, voilà ça a donné euh, la victoire et je suis super content de, de m'imposer sur euh, les terres du team des Landes Sport qui a fait un travail superbe, superbe. A home win for his team, the Land Sport. And Thierry Raymond, very happy with his uh, second win. Amado in second, Rosa Janin in third, Nan Huto and Aurélien Crochard. And the youngster has some difficulties in opening the champagne bottle. But practice makes perfect, and this won't be his last champagne bottle that he has to open. And not even his last victory, probably. Super 1600 then with Jean Baptiste Dubourg from the middle of the front row. He takes the best start of that contact between uh, Julien Febro and Dorian Lonet. Lonet is pushed wide there, loses a couple of places and is pushed into sixth, seventh position even. But in the lead is Jean Baptiste Dubourg from the twingo of David Olivier and uh, Laurent Chartrain in the C2. Olivier immediately goes for the joker lap. That might be good tactics. He rejoins behind uh, Julien Febro, the Formula One journalist. Still leading Dubourg from Chartrain. And then Adel Adeline Sarnier, who is second in the championship behind Dubourg. She does everything to keep up with the leader. But beating him, not yet. And Chartrain loses some time there. And he rejoins behind David Olivier in the Twingo. And now everything depends on what uh, Julien Febro can do in his sack. So he still has to do his uh, joker lap as well, but he's blocking the others a bit now. The car clearly damaged after that contact with uh, Dorian Lonet. Jean-Baptiste Dubourg, the leader, going for his joker lap now. And he stays in the lead comfortably. A great win. That will, would be his third consecutive win if he can hold on to this. And there's no reason to think that he would fail now. Great result for Dubourg, David Olivier in second and Adeline Sagné in third. So the third consecutive win that is for Jean-Baptiste Dubourg, who is the clear leader in the Super 1600 Championship. Un très bon départ, on a vraiment réglé une, une auto qui démarre très fort. Ensuite, un rythme de course très soutenu. J'ai surtout pas regardé derrière, je me suis pas posé de questions. Je savais que l'auto était performante. Et une troisième victoire d'affilée euh, qui fait vraiment euh, du bien, plaisir à domicile pour l'équipe des Landes. Quoi demander de mieux and another home win for the the Lande sport team in Lesse. The Bull wins it from Olivier Sagné, Chartrain and Chanois. And the penultimate champagne shower. There's one left, the one of the supercars drivers. And we'll take a look at that A final with Jérôme grosset and Paul next to him, Fabien Payet, clearly the two quickest cars here this weekend. Herrick Napik is the third car on the front row. And who takes the best start? It's Grosse Janin squeezing Payet a bit to the outside. And he goes first into the first corner. Payet in second, then Knapik. And in fourth, it's, uh, I think it was Jean Jouin. Or is it Alain Heu? Alain Heu is now following Christophe Wilt. The two C4s, a bit off form here this weekend. But Grosse Janin leads it from Payet, then Knapik. And then Jean Jouin. Payet sticking to the rear bumper of the Clio of Grosse Janin. The speed difference is not really that big. He loses one, maybe two tenths. Payet every lap, but that could be because of the dust. This is the final race of the day. And the dust is clearly unsettling now because of the low standing sun as well. Joker lap for Grosse Janin. And that means Payet now has the lead in hand. Maybe he can take advantage of that position. Not having a car showing up dust into his face to set some quicker laps. But he only has two laps left. And he still has to do his joker lap as well. I think he probably does it right now. He will not wait for the last lap. There comes Payet. And there's Grosse Janin. Grosse Janin coming out of the corner. That will be close. But Payet is still second. Or will he try something here? He's on the slippery stuff on the outside. There's no way he can pass Grosse Janin. 
So Grosse Janet takes his fourth win out of four races. A great championship. The Renault Clio driver is having fantastic result after a difficult start of the weekend. Fabien a fait un super départ. On est arrivé côte à côte au bout. Et et puis après, bah, je suis j'ai enchaîné mes trois quatre tours devant. J'ai la consigne du tour joker et je fais j'ai fait une petite faute donc je me suis fait une frayeur. Mais voilà, faut surtout Euh, bah remarquer le fait qu'on a qu'on a réussi à revenir d'une situation un peu délicate suite à la première manche qualif et surtout il euh, y avait de la concurrence qui est très 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 rapide en face euh, donc c'est vraiment bien d'avoir euh, enchaîné encore avec une victoire great win for Grosjean after a difficult start of the weekend with that fourth time in the opening heat but uh, Payet and Knapik look very happy on that podium as well Christophe Wild a bit disappointed with that fourth place in front of Alan in the other C4 and the final race of the weekend, Harry Knappik running away from the champagne bottle of Grosse Janin. That was it from Lesser. We hope you enjoyed it. I know we did.